Is your mic used for spoken word, music, comedy, or podcasts? Why don't you take a seat on my couch and share your craft? Focus on the future. Reminisce about the past. This segment pinpoints your journey to the top. So make your presence felt before the mic drops. This is The Mic Drop with B. Anderson, and we are back again with episode 14. And today we are sitting down with a very, very special guest. I'm going to let her um, tell y'all a little bit about who she is. And so would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, of course. So my name is China Horton O'Lighton. I am a spoken word artist. I am a radio host of my own radio show. I'm also a wife, um, and I'm an MC as well. So I host events and shows that people ask me to do, sometimes in Cincinnati or different places. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. So let's dive right into it. The first question I want to ask you, because I've been able to tap in with you quite a bit, um, you are always talking about God yes. and everything that you do. Would you like to talk about how you use your gifts to give God all of the glory? Yes, absolutely. So for me, um, my perspective on that is, you know, God is the one who gave me my gifts, right? Mm -hmm. So if he's the one that gave me my gifts, uh, why not use those very same gifts to bring the glory back to him? Um, One of those gifts that I mentioned earlier was spoken word. I know that when I was younger, I used to always write, always write all the time. Mm-hmm. And my mom, she would find like short, short poems in my room. Mm-hmm. And she would be like, she just was like, you always writing. So she noticed that I had this gift. Um, but, you know, as I evolved and got older, I recognized that that gift wasn't just to entertain people. Mm-hmm. It wasn't to entertain myself, but it was to give the glory to God. And I do that by speaking of my own personal testimonies, things that I've been through. I talk about racism in my poems. I talk about heartache. I talk about relationships. I talk about all of those things that we experience Mm -hmm. as a human being, um, but how God has gotten me through those situations. And that's how I give the glory to him. Okay, I love this so much. Um, And one of the other things because we're definitely going to dive into the spoken word and the poetry and everything but let's talk first about you being a radio host yeah. um your first radio show aired in 2019 but i would love for you to dive into uh your journey to the one in a million show first tell people what the um uh, uh what your journey was like and then you know explain what the one in a million show is yes yeah, so Wow. So just even thinking about how the one in the million show started, like it always just make my mouth to drop because it actually started in 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, I had moved to Columbus, Ohio for a season and I was by myself. I didn't know anybody there. Um, I didn't have any friends there and I stayed there a little bit over a year and it was a complete isolation mode for me. And I believe that God had moved me to a different location for me to be alone with him. Mm. So during that process, um, I started to know who China was. You know, sometimes you have a sense of knowing who you are, but you don't really know until you, you search for God and you ask him, like, show me what my gifts is. Show me what my purpose is. And that's the journey that I began to go on personally for me. So when I did that, 
in Columbus, um, you know, that's when I started to really build that relationship with God, you know, um, accepting Christ as my savior. Um, and with doing that, he started to show me my gifts. He started to show me who I was, what type of woman that he wanted to mold me into. And one in a million, it started as a Facebook page. So it was a Facebook page. I remember I did my first video explaining what one in a million was. And um, the video was like, I introduced who I was. You know, I said, I'm on a journey with, you know, finding who I am and just being bold for God. Because, you know, if I can be honest, you know, we live in a society where God is really pushed out of, pushed out of the light of everything. And I wanted to be that person or that woman that that realized that I need God to do everything in my life. You know, so I give him the glory for everything that I've done, everything that I've been through. I couldn't have got through it without God. And I started this Facebook page where I will dive into scripture. I would explain what scripture is. I would um, post motivational videos to people. And that's how it really started. Mm -hmm. And I remember a season where even though I started this Facebook page and everybody was liking it, it was starting to build up and things like that. There were seasons where I would delete the page. And then I would hear God say, no, start that page back up. Then I'll activate it again, delete it again. And it just became a cycle to where God had really had to like put me in a situation like, you know what your purpose is. Why are you running from it? So at that point, I became, I started becoming consistent with the page and with being consistent with the page, my growth and knowing about the Bible, being knowledgeable about the word mm -hmm. um, started to become more stronger and more prevalent in my life and actually living it. So there's a difference. I always like to point that out because you can read scripture all day long. You can quote the Bible all day long, but if you're not living a life that is according to the word, then it, it, I mean, it, it really doesn't mean anything. So with being who I was and just trying to live the best way I can according to the word of God, I started to do that. And I noticed that, you know, I was getting advanced in the word. I knew I didn't want to be a person that just spoke about the Bible, but, and, and throw scripture in people's face. I wanted them to also understand it in a way that they can comprehend it because, you know, you can, talk about scripture and i may be able to understand it but the person next to me may not be understand a word what i'm saying mm -hmm. so i wanted to put scripture in a uh relate scripture in the bible to people to where they can understand it like okay this is what this means because a lot of people run from the word of god because they don't simply understand it so you fall into false religions you fall into all all other type of religions and I'm not going to get deep into that but that's what can happen mm -hmm. so for me I just wanted to be I said Lord if if you're calling me into ministry to speak your word I don't want to be one of those hypocrites I don't want to be one of those people that preach the word and I'm doing something else behind closed doors I want to live totally for you I want to be sold out for you so once the one in a million page was established then Years later, 2019, now we four years after 2015, mm -hmm. I had um, I had did this. I actually got interviewed on 1320 AM WCBG uh, by this young lady named Gloria. Mm -hmm. And she had a show at the time on the radio and she invited me to do spoken word and just talk about myself. It was just one of these things that just happened. Mm -hmm. And I got on her show and I always said the video went slightly viral in Cincinnati mm -hmm. and uh from there you know a year had went by and I would I remember this clear as day I was at home I had just woke up and I it was like I heard this voice like you need to get on the radio mm -hmm. but for me I'm like and I'm sure a lot of people can resonate with this you know sometimes you can feel like you're not good enough yeah. you can feel like you're inadequate you can feel like well I don't I don't know the whole Bible. I don't know. You want me to talk about the word of God? Like, I'm, you know, I'm not even, no, nah, I ain't ready for this. This is not for me. But God was like, I'm going to enhance you. I'm going to equip you. That's all I kept hearing. Don't worry. I'm telling you, get on the radio. I'm going to equip you with everything that you need. And I took that and I ran with it. 
So my first show aired actually August 3rd, 2019. And I didn't realize at the time until after the show aired that it was actually on my grandmother's birthday, wow. who I was really, really, really close with on my father's side. And it messed me up because she was a woman of God. Mm -hmm. And and for, for it to be aired on that day, and I'm not realizing until after, I was like, wow, like I know this was a God thing. So once that happened, um, the show being consistent, now here we are, 2022, and it's been going strong. And the whole purpose of One in a Million is, you know, for me, um, even with the shirt I'm wearing, this is part of the logo. This is the logo for One in a Million. But what it means is um, One in a Million, you think about it has six, it's six zeros in, in, in a million. So that's why the six rings are around this logo. And then you have the one in the center. Mm -hmm. And for me, it felt like, with being having this zeal for God at a young age and being bold for Christ, I felt like I was just like that one out of millions of people that was just running for God. Mm. And the scripture that I always back up with being one in a million is uh, Psalms 139 verse 14. And it talks about um, just being wonderfully and fearfully made. You know, it's as marvelous as your work for you are wonderfully and fearfully made. And I'm not even talking about from a physical aspect, but recognizing because of who you are, you are that one in a million. There is nobody that can be like you. Mm -hmm. There's nobody that can be like me. So for God to be a creator, to create all of us with these individual talents and gifts, you know, that's being one in a million. So for me... One in a million is a bold statement. So when I wear this, I'm saying that I'm one in a million for God. You know, I'm bold for God. No matter where I go, I'm not going to compromise what I believe because I'm one in a million. So that's where the one in a million stems from. And yeah, it's just been up from there. So the first show in 2019, what that's when the one in a million started? The show, the radio show. Okay, yes. got you. Um. I love those shirts. Uh, I've Thank seen you. some of them online. I've seen you wearing them. Uh, they pretty sold out though. Yeah. You know, I was, <laughs> no, I, I was get trying to get yeah. I was trying to get uh, me a couple of them, especially I like the red and yeah. the black one. And, Thank you. Yeah, I was trying to get them, and uh, and my side, everything was sold out. No matter which I, one I picked, <laughs> I'm like ah. I, I have to get some more, and I just had some, but I was sold out too. So can you uh? tell the people where they can find your merchandise because you got like, uh, it's like coffee cups and yeah, all kinds of stuff. Yes. yes, coffee Talk mugs. about your uh, your apparel, your merchandise. So, okay, so funny story with the apparel is, you know, the logo, I was going back and forth with the creator who created it for me mm -hmm. for like months. I sat on this for almost a year, the logo, before it was even released mm -hmm. and um i had got my llc in 2021 just last year and with that um again this I, I have a really strong communication with the lord so um the holy spirit had guided me to like okay your anniversary my anniversary was coming up for the radio for my third year in 2021 mm -hmm. and at this point i didn't have a logo everybody knew okay the one in a million show but it wasn't anything to identify like oh that's one in a million so with this being in the works for over a year going back and forth about it i was like looking at it one day i said this is it like that's it it was only one change that i need to make and i made it and i said this is it so when i released it you know i said i'm gonna get a couple of shirts made with the logo when I released it, August, again, on my anniversary, August 3rd, mm -hmm. 2021, I did not expect for people to, like, buy them crazy. So when I released it, it was like, oh, my gosh, that's yeah. dope. Yes. Like, I want that. And I believe, like, it just, it's something about it. Like, it just really stands out. And it just went crazy that day. Like, they had sold out within two days. So I was just like, okay, God, I know that was you. So from there, I've just been trying to enhance the brand and just doing more with it. I do have other things in the works that I'm working on right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so it's been a journey. 
with the apparel. So what is the station that people can find the one in a million show on? Yes, so I am on 1320 AM WCVG. Um, it's every Saturday at 2 o'clock p.m. Um, I haven't released this information yet, so you're going to be the first to know what I'm about to say. So I'm also on another station now. Uh, it's 103.9 FM. Okay. So now I'm going to be on two stations as of yesterday. And so um, it, it um, it's the same time as well? Yes. On both stations? Same okay. time as well. Eastern Standard Time, yes. Oh, man, look at you taking over. <laughs> <laughs> So earlier you talked about, um, you know, spoken word and thing. You've been a writer since you were a kid. Oh, yes. What, you know, was it that initially made you as a kid say, I want to write, you know, I want to do poetry. Yeah. And then, you know, it was like your launch pad into spoken word. So, you know, talk about that. Oh, man. Uh it's so many instances that I realized that I had this gift for writing, but I think one of the most prominent is I was going to Rockville Elementary School and we had these state tests and I was, I think I was like out of, it was like out of a hundred or something students, I was like within the top five that scored like super high on the writing part. And when my my mom had seen that score. It was like a super high score. She was like, yeah, this this is it right here. And my dad, he always pushed, like, he was very strong on and adamant about being on top of my education, pronunci uh, pronunciation. He was one of the pillars in my life that always was like, when you speak, make sure you speak clearly. When people hear you, they should they should know that you have clear diction they should be able to understand what you're saying clearly like and he was always like that so with with that and having the support of my mom just giving me a lot of notebooks to write in different mm -hmm. little gel pens and all that just being creative I, that's how i knew like i have something here you know when you're young you don't really know what your purpose is but you know like this is something i really enjoy doing mm -hmm. but as i got into my 20s and just recognizing like okay this is what I'm supposed to be doing with this gift. That's how I really just started taking off. Mm. And so, you know, have you ever considered, like, you know, becoming an author or anything of that? Oh, my gosh. It's so funny you say that because, like, honestly, I I do want to write. Um, I want to have my first spoken word book, mm -hmm. but I just don't know where to start. And it's like I have binders at home full of writings, like, binders full of writing all of my writings that i've released is copyrighted already anyway mm. but um i just don't know where to start and then i also want to do like my first spoken word album everybody asks me about that everybody asks me but again i just don't know where to start with that so i'm just you know asking god for direction with that and the right people to connect with so. well you know it's definitely you know funny you say that because i'll be releasing my first one this year okay and um Come <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so I was I was kind of in the same boat and really? then um you know um my sister uh Kimberly Duwat Bowden kind of pointed oh, me in the right direction. Yes. Yeah, right. she she pointed me in the right direction because she released the spoken word album last year. Yeah. So yep. you know, she pointed me in the right direction of vibe one. He was on my show. Yeah. Um he was my second episode. But you know, I got in the studio with him and you know, it was great to work with him. He actually produced the intro for the mic drop. Wow. And so, you know, went that route. So, you know, it's definitely people out here that <sighs> are... I need to connect. Yes, yeah, well-versed in that area. Yeah. I'll get you that info. But, okay. no, it's just, it's just great to hear that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, then it's... your book can be displayed on this yeah, table. So, okay. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> so, you know, with speaking about spoken word, you have you know, traveled around the world, like, mm -hmm. to where you done spoken word in Nigeria. Yes. What was that experience like? Oh, my gosh. So, you know, my husband is Nigerian, mm -hmm. and uh, he, <clears throat> I had planned on going to Nigeria during this time anyways, and he was telling me about this church event they were having. It was called the Anastasis, mm -hmm. and, um, I was like, oh, that's dope. He was like, yeah, that's going to be happening while you're, you know, coming to travel. 
So a few days later, um, even before this happened, though, I just want to back up a little bit here. Before this happened, I had wrote in my notebook that I wanted to do spoken word internationally one day. Mm. So um, fast forward, I already had this trip to Nigeria being planned. And a few days later, after the conversation with my husband told me about that, he was like, you need to have a piece ready. I said, a piece ready for what? He was like, you're going to perform here. I was like, I don't have mm. nothing ready. I said, no, I cannot do it. So he told me the theme. It was called uh, Messiah. And that was the name of my piece. So I had to do this piece. And I had to memorize it within two days. Wow. Within two days. So that means that after work, I was on the clock practicing, 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 practicing. But it wasn't easy. I couldn't just make a piece and like, oh, you're performing in Nigeria. Right. I actually had to do an audition. Mm. So they submitted it through this his church. And the people that was over the event had to look at it, listen to the lyrics, approve it. Once it was approved, they got back to me through email saying, okay, this is good. Mm -hmm. This is your time slot. It was like a whole big ordeal. So then when I got to Nigeria, my husband had got like this dress tailored for me. Um, it, it went real fast. They were telling me my time slot was backstage. They were like, okay, you on. The lyrics was on the screen. And it was like this big mega church. Mm -hmm. So it was like a really, really cool experience for me. But um, God got the glory out of that too. And I connected with a lot of people afterwards, after that um, ministering uh, performance. And then from there, I was like, yeah, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit for me. It was dope because I seen that video online and I mean, man, you killed it up there. So Thank you. Um, <laughs> do you uh, look forward to doing more poetry internationally? Yes, um, most definitely. I, I'm, hmm, I don't, yeah. So it kind of got my tongue right here because <laughs> I'm, in the midst of right now, with my spoken word, God is even dealing with me to just go forward. I want to work on um, videos, live, like a music video for my spoken word, where mm -hmm. it's storytelling within it, mm -hmm. with the lyrics that I'm talking about, and mm -hmm. people acting it out. Like, oh, I want to get into that. I need to find a photographer, a videographer, like, all of that. Like, so this is where I'm at. I know what I want to do, but it's just who I need to connect to and Absolutely. how to get to those resources. So that's where I'm at with stuff like that. Yes, I, I definitely have people in the spoken word community to connect you with in those areas. So, okay. you know, we are definitely going to talk about that. Okay. So, uh, what advice would you give someone who, you know, especially a, a young person mm -hmm. who may feel like they want to travel a similar journey as you, you know, with being on the radio and things of that sort, what advice would you give them to uh, be able to reach those goals? Yeah, so, I mean, the advice that I would give is definitely be sure that that is where God is leading you to. You know, the mistakes that I have made um, in my life is, you know, diving into things that I know that God has not destined me, destined me to go there. So when you have the the clear conscience and uh, clarity that, okay, God, this is what you want me to do. Even if you don't have, like like me in the beginning, I said, i never been on radio before. That mm -hmm. was my first time. Like, I didn't have any professional experience, but here I am being led by the Holy Spirit. Like, I'm going to enhance you with everything that you need. Mm -hmm. Even if you feel at that time, like, I'm not good enough for this. I cannot do this. If you know that God is positioning you to be in a position of where something you never did before, that's how you know it's God because you can't do anything like that by yourself. You have to have God to do something like that. So whenever it's something extraordinary, you like, man, I don't think I can do this, and you know God is calling you to do it, that's mm -hmm. how you know it's your purpose. It is your divine purpose. Walk into it boldly, and I can be the first to say, you know, I wasn't always confident, like, yeah, I got this. No. I'm like, God, I need you mm -hmm. to walk me through this because if I don't have you, I'm going to fail. I'm going to fall on my face. So when you also have that humbleness of, you're like, God, I need you. Please just lead me the right way. He will lead you and he will 
he will put you exactly where you need to be. So, you know, my advice is to always just allow him to lead. You know, I've led myself for so many years and it led me to the wrong place. It led me to the wrong people, wrong situations. But when I finally just let God take over my life, now I'm experiencing the things that I'm experiencing now because he's leading me. I love it. I love it. That is absolute um, great advice. And I feel like whether it's a younger person, an older person, anybody can take that advice. Yeah. So I love it. This is the part of the show where I'm going to ask China's a couple of miscellaneous questions. <laughs> and the first question I want to ask you is, if you could give advice or a message to your 21 year old self what would it be oh my gosh <laughs> oh to my 21 year old self mm -hmm. i would say hmm china you are worthy mm -hmm. um i will tell myself to not feel like i have to have a timeline with everything um you know I'm sure some people can resonate with this also. You know, when you become a certain age, you have a time like, I'm okay, I'm gonna have kids at this age, mm -hmm. I'm gonna get married at this age, and then I'm gonna have a job, then I'm gonna. Yeah. <laughs> you can't think like that because everything that I thought that was gonna happen within the time frame I wanted it to happen, it didn't. It happened on God's time. Mm -hmm. And I realized that when, you know, God operates outside of our time. That's why you always hear that saying, God is always on time, or Absolutely. he's right on time. Yeah. But it's significantly true. It is. You know, everything that's happened in my life with me being married internationally, with me just starting radio, doing smoke, everything happened in the time that he wanted it to happen. And I also would tell myself, you know, it's okay to be the black sheep. I always felt like I always stood out amongst people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it wasn't always in a positive light. I okay. always felt like awkward or, but God began to show me was, he, he began to show me that you weren't made to fit in. You were always made to stand out. You were mm -hmm. always made to be different from others because you, you carry my light. So with, with all of those things, knowing my worth, uh, being okay with being on, with God's time and not China's time, that it'll happen when he wants it to happen. And then lastly, being okay with being different from others. You know, if I would have known those things back then, I'd probably be further along than where I'm even at today. Mm. But I just thank God and I give him the glory for allowing me to recognize these things because even though I recognize these things later, it was the time that I was supposed to recognize it. So that's what I'll tell my 21 year old self. Ah, I love it. <laughs> Next question. We gonna use your one in a million with this. Okay. If you were given a million dollars to take a vacation um, to anywhere in the world that you wanted to, you could take you and your family there. Where would you go? Nigeria all day long <laughs> and the reason being for that is and it's so crazy you said a million dollars because I, I, I've had this revelation since I was younger that I will make my first million soon and it's so crazy how one in a million is all in my logo it's so crazy but yeah. I'll say Nigeria because um for those who don't know like right now my husband is in Nigeria but I will do that because I will stay over there until our processing is done, until he's here. Mm -hmm. And I would just, and Nigeria is incredible. It's so awesome. I advise anybody, even if it's not Nigeria, any place in Africa, if you get the chance to, just go. I know a lot of people talk about I don't have the funds to do it. I didn't either. Mm -hmm. But it's possible. You know, the first time my husband's family paid for me to go over there, they paid for my trip. But even after that, like it's possible to take those type of trips. And a lot of people stop, limit themselves because they think, oh, I don't have the money to do it. You can do it. You can go to any place you want to in this world. Mm -hmm. Yep. I love it. I love it. 
Um, why don't you let um, everyone know where they will see or hear you next? And then where are you on websites and social media? Yes. So right now, actually, currently, I'm going to be doing some spoken word um, at Power of Faith Ministries. Uh, there's going to be a women's conference. And there is the theme is Empowered to Win, hosted by Pastor Jerry Banks at Power of Faith Ministries, 8120 Hamilton Avenue. So it's going to be happening June 3rd through the 5th. So if you have time, you know, definitely come out. I'll be doing some spoken word there. Um, and then also you can visit my website, www.thenumber1inamillionshow.com. You can find me there. I'm on Instagram at China Horton Olayton, O-L-A-T-I-A-N. And I'm also on Facebook, China Horton Olayton. And then uh, One in a Million also has a Facebook page, The One in a Million Show, LLC. And then the Instagram page is The One in a Million Show, LLC as well. So you can find me there. Reach out to me if you want to book me for spoken word, uh, hosting, anything. Or if you want to be a guest on my show, you can go through my website and you can definitely reach out to me that way. I always like to have new guests on my show as well. So, yeah. Well, I have definitely enjoyed you. Um, Thank you. Know, you. I enjoy you too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, dropping gems and, you know, just really being an inspiration out here uh, to everyone. Thank you. Um, this is episode 14, which means there is only one more left. Season finale wow. will be coming very, very soon. And so you all make sure that you tap in with me. Make sure that you tap in with China. You know, uh, Cincinnati is doing great things out here. Yes. And um, I'm just happy to be a part of it. Happy to be in a position to where I can, you know, have a platform to allow yeah. individuals to come on and talk about all things them. Yeah. Well, this has been The Mic Drop with B. Anderson. And we are out. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and comment on it. And subscribe to my channel for more exclusive content like this.